first of all, would you please introduce yourself to our viewers? I am Leah Cook. Um, I am, do you need me to spell my name? I'm so used to news interviews. <laughs> L-E-A-H-K-O-C-H. -H. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I am one of the members of the fourth generation of ownership here at Holiday World and Splash and Safari. Wow. Um, tell us just a little bit of the history of the park. Uh, my great-grandfather opened Santa Claus Land in 1946. He came to Santa Claus, Indiana and realized that there was nothing here and he was really disappointed by that. So he opened this as a retirement project and my grandfather took it over and then my father took it over and now my siblings and I are taking it over now. Um, we became Holiday World in 1984. Uh, we added the water park in 1993 and we've been growing like crazy since. Wow. <laughs> so how did the idea of this theming develop? that you thought you should do the holiday thing? <laughs> so the theming began with Santa Claus Land, obviously. Yeah. It was a natural fit in the town of Santa Claus, yeah. Indiana. It was, was something we had to do. Um, and when we decided we wanted to expand, we realized they realized there was only so many options yeah. <laughs> with Christmas and decided that they really wanted to make the park a lot bigger than that. And so the natural extension would be, well, aside from Christmas, what other holidays are there? And so we added the 4th of July section and Halloween at that point. And then Thanksgiving came many years later. Yeah. Um, so what is the special within? Do you have special merchandise or special um, <laughs> events or something? Um, we love special events. We love doing as much as we can to showcase uh, Holiday World and our history. Um, right now we've got some really great merch that has the old like Santa Claus Land font on it and stuff like that that like I haven't gotten to the gift shop yet to buy but I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited about. Uh, for special events we love to do as many as we can. We have a roller coaster event, Hollywood Nights, that uh, we theme after movies that we do every year that's a lot of fun. Um, we have Rock the World um, every August which is a Christian music festival and then in the Halloween season, of course, we have Happy Halloween Weekends, which is a lot of fun. And we had different decorations that are kind of themed to each section of the park. So Christmas, since it's all about lights, gets Halloween lights and things like that. So we yeah. like to customize it to each section. Great. Why do you got this great offer of free parking, free sunscreen <laughs> and free soft drinks? My dad came up with the idea. He went on a cruise and was so impressed by the free amenities that a cruise offers and how little you have to think about your wallet and how little you have to think about everything. And he thought, why can't that apply to a theme park? And so he decided from that that free soft drinks would be a pretty good idea. So he came and everybody told him he was crazy and he did it anyway. Um, but yeah, and then now we're famous for it. And yeah. so, you know, we didn't even think about charging for parking. It's been free for so long that yeah. it was a natural thing. We just realized all of a sudden, oh, people charge for that and we don't. Yeah. We have free parking. <laughs> um, so uh, you got pretty special weather in this area. <laughs> so how do you uh, handle it when thunderstorms are coming? So we try to keep rides open as long as possible when it rains. Um, unfortunately, when lightning comes into the area, that's when it becomes a real safety issue um, or wind. And so we have different levels that we close attractions at. So obviously the roller coasters need to close before other attractions that are lowered to the ground. So we have um, kind of guides based on how close lightning is to us. And that's when we shut down rides. And then we have certain reopening procedures. Uh, but we, we do try to keep things as open as much as we possibly can. Do you get a special weather station or something? Where you have a radar <laughs> or something? We've got a nice little dispatch area in our yeah. park where they follow the weather and they've got some really fancy weather apps <laughs> and things like that that they follow that I don't understand, but <laughs> they do a great job with it. Okay, great. <laughs> Why did you decide to build this unique uh, ride like Thunderbird is? We looked at all of the coasters out there. We knew we wanted to build a B&M. We knew we wanted to build something really unique, but we knew we wanted to build something for families. And so we looked at the winged coaster and we knew that that felt right. That felt like a good family ride and kind of had that energy that we wanted and that new sensation that people in this area really haven't experienced before. And we looked all around us and realized that all the winged coasters were right here in the Midwest. <laughs> so. It wasn't going to be that unique to build a wing coaster, so adding the launch was a part of the conversation. Became a part of the conversation at that point when we said, "Well, how can we make this different? How can we make can we make this more interesting?" And so eventually, the launch developed out of that, and I think we did a pretty good job differentiating. <laughs> so you were doing the promotion of this coaster with the, uh, the first <laughs> the, the 66 launch. days at sea <laughs> because. 
first launched wing first, coaster. Yeah. yeah, you're doing the promotion with America's yeah. first launch yes. wing coaster. Why don't you do the promotion with America's only launch? Yeah, with yeah. the world's only launched B and M <laughs> wing coaster. <laughs> um, well, first of all, with that, most of our guests don't really care about. Sadly, don't care about the distinction between B and M or another coaster manufacturer. So. Um, and then for, you know, if anyone ever does add one, then we'll probably go to, you know, more of the world's first, but we, we do try to kind of change it up and keep the only as well. And, yeah, okay. um, but really we are still, we'll always be the first. We might not necessarily al always be the only one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what are the future plans of Holiday World? Oh, <laughs> depends on who you ask and depends on what day. Um, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Our water park is doing really well. We obviously want to keep adding things to make people happy there, but we really see the future of the park. We've been doing a lot of work to overhaul different old buildings and kind of give them the love they deserve. So we're working on a bunch of projects to really amp up the theming. So if you go down the water park and you look at like Wilda Bistro, which is one of our newer restaurants, that's kind of our goal for theming. Or if you go into Mrs. Claus's kitchen here, um, and again, that's one that we recently redid and we just really want to take every part of the park and enhance it and make it feel more and more like you're in that area. So when you're in Christmas, we want it to feel like Christmas Day yeah. and the most beautiful Christmas Day you can imagine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some my pleasure. Last words, uh, that you want to tell our viewers maybe? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm trying to think. I mean, a holiday world we, we love to think about value we love to think about our guests as much as we can and so whatever we can do you know that's going to be in our plans great thank you very <laughs>